Hello, my name is Jeremiah Samarian, and welcome back to Harsh Critique. Today we have another Patreon backer requested Harsh Critique by Dr. Warpstar. And this is... You know, sometimes on the SCP Wiki I see feedback that's like, Your character is a Mary Sue! And I think to myself, shut the f*** up. Come on. Every female character who's competent at their job is labeled a Mary Sue at some point or another. And some male characters who are newly introduced, named as Marty Stews, so... Like, it gets overused a lot on the SCP Wiki, but guess the f*** what now? I'm gonna f*** harsh critique a tale which in contains a clear example of a Mary Sue. It's called All is Bright, and it starts with December 16th, 2000 and blank. It's black boxed in a tale for no reason. You can't just give me a year? What's the problem? If you say it's 2010, will I suddenly no longer understand your story? <sighs> Let me get this straight. Well, that's a good way to start the tale. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Let me get this straight. Ethics director Lorelei stared at the grinning face in front of her. You want to sing at the site holiday party? Yes, I want to sing an old favorite of mine. Dr. Bright wore a cheery smile and was decked in festive accessories. The ethics director looked at her clipboard, and though she felt a foreboding about the idea, she wrote him in at the bottom of the list. So, we're introducing a brand new character, and we're making them essentially a boss of a long-established character. This is a classic example of Mary Sue writing. Don't f***ing do this. If you want to introduce a new character, don't introduce them as the bosses of all the characters everybody already knows. It feels like that should be obvious, but everybody wants to be important from the get-go. When I wrote Dr. Sumerian as a character at first, he was just a bit player, like just a level, like a level three guy doing a little bit of work in the ethics committee, and then it slowly ramped up and ramped up, and now because he's used on the site as almost the only ethics committee liaison, he's, the, he's like the ethics guy, but it took a while to build up to that level of seniority. Literally, it's like, it's literally like working at the foundation. You gotta start small and work your way up. And that's true of all f***ing fandoms. If you want to build a fan work, if you want to build a fan character, do it. It's no problem in the SCP Wiki. We're cool with that. Just don't make them the boss from the get-go and start telling other people what to do. Oh boy. You will get the last performance of the talent show, and I'm going to trust you not to pull any of your usual antics, question mark, at the end of that sentence, which makes no sense. Her glare attempted to cook him all the way through. That is an odd choice of phrasing. <laughs> but he seemed either unaffected or too dense to have its desired effect. Think that's going to go over well. Like, I'm... <sighs> Understanding extant characters is sort of important if you're going to write them into your stories. There is no canon in the SCP Wiki, but I think most people who are going to read your tale, just understand your audience, right? You're going to draw people in because they're going to be like, oh, it's a tale about Bright. If you insult Bright in the tale, and not in like a character insulting Bright, but the narrator insults Bright, people who came for Bright are not going to like your story. That's just dumb. I wouldn't dream of it, Director. I've turned over a new leaf, I promise. No ending the world, no harassment, no. <laughs> really? Bright screamed as Lorelei pushed a pin into his throat, pinning him to the wall. <sighs> yep. That's a real thing. So, we have a one big problem here. Let's just, let's, oh god. Beyond the obvious stupidity. Let's talk about the problem with the scene placement. And this is a serious issue with a lot of, it's, it's a serious issue in a lot of Mary Sue stories, yeah. We have a white room problem going on here. And I, I, I'm guilty of this periodically, but I try to anchor a scene in like, 
something. Describe something in the room for people to build around, and usually something that evokes a particular sense, like smell or sight, like a fluorescent light that's buzzing. So that gives you a little bit of a, a foundation for what the room might look like in your head. And you can see the light, and you can hear the buzzing, and you can understand the idea of the room, and maybe you define that there's a table in the middle of it. You don't have to go into exquisite detail over your room, but you have to do something to anchor your story. And instead of doing that, this story is anchored in nothing. They describe the characters, they describe uh, the things the characters are holding, but they don't describe anything about the room, except here, right now, like four or five paragraphs, no, four paragraphs in, where Lorelei pins Bright to the wall. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> You can't do that. You've spent all this time with these characters and you have no idea where they are in space. That's important. Let me be perfectly clear with you, Jack. We in the ethics department. <laughs> Why is the ethics department getting all up in his space? What the hell? We in the ethics department have had enough of your bullshit. And if we have to clean up one, what the ethics committee doesn't clean up shit. They don't, what? To clean up another one of your little adventures, you'll spend the next year of your pathetic existence in the body of a hamster. Do you understand? <laughs> but, but, but your ethics, wouldn't that be cruel punishment? He screamed as the pen was pushed in. This is just assault, by the way. Like, this isn't funny assault. This is just assault at this point. Like, this is the problem with building a character straight up like this. And you, this is your introduction to the character. Assaulting Dr. Bright. And this version of Dr. Bright, so far... You haven't shown me that he's dangerous. Not every version of Dr. Bright on the wiki is the same. Sometimes he's just a regular guy. So you're literally just assaulting this dude for no reason. <laughs> and he's not even fighting back. He's like, but, 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 but your ethics, <laughs> wouldn't that be cruel punishment? So he's being subservient. <laughs> oh man, this is what's happening. Screams as the pin was pushed in harder, he knew it likely broke the skin this time. Yep, he's being assaulted. What the rest of the Foundation seems to misunderstand is that it's we who we'll decide what is cruel, and I'm very sure we can heavy our hands with regards to you? I don't... I, I guess that... I guess heavy our hands could be an idiom that I'm unfamiliar with. Anyway... Bloody our hands? I don't know. We're a lot more powerful than the simple jokes you throw at us. The taunt you throw us behind your back with ones who tell you fives. What's you're just quoting? You're just quoting from the ethics committee orientation. God damn it! Not gonna always find different ways to deal with you. You're just quoting from the ethics committee orientation and pretending like it's good dialogue. And what's worse is this dude is obviously subservient to you. He's not. Oh man. He's obviously not, like, fighting back. He doesn't say, he didn't make, he didn't make jokes about the ethics committee being ineffective. He just said, but your ethics, wouldn't that be cruel punishment? Which is a reasonable thing to ask an ethics committee member. And you're like, no, 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 you think we're a joke? No, he didn't say you were a joke. Are you, in this character is insane. This character is literally crazy. And that's sad. But let's continue. Bright wasn't afraid of death. Far from it, but that woman was a demon from hell, and would thank you, narrator, for explaining just how serious this new character is. Thank you, and would torment his soul before spitting him out. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Understood, director. Bright whimpered as the woman pulled away, leaving a drop of blood to run onto his shirt. <laughs> she literally assaulted this man, stuck a pin into his throat, and she's supposed to be the one who's reasonable? Good, now get out of my sight. I've, now I know what kind of voice I need to use for this character. I've got an event to organize and bigger things to grill than you. I'm, I know it's a female character. I'm still doing the gritty. Because <laughs> it's like, what, what? This doesn't make any sense. Oh, man. Who acts like this? No person acts like this. The director pushed her glasses up and walked away, unaware of the diabolical grin on the man's <laughs> face. Thank you for telling me that, narrator, instead of showing me. <sighs> Smug it up now, bitch. <laughs> See, this is the thing. This is like this is like somebody like projecting what they think people think of them when they're not around onto a character. Smug it up now, bitch. You'll have all the grill you want. Brent Bright 
giggled under his breath? That's not a giggling sentence. Let me, let me see if I can do that. Hee <laughs> hee, smug it up now, bitch. You'll have all the grill you want. What does that even mean? Wiping the blood from his chest, licking it off his fingers before walking down the hall? Well, you... Okay, I guess this is trying to establish Bright as a weirdo? I mean, I'm gonna be completely frank with you. Even though his smug it up now, bitch, you'll have all the grill you want sounds like nonsense talk and is kind of, you know, offensive a little bit. If somebody walks up to you and stabs a pin into your neck and leaves blood trailing down onto your shirt, I think you may actually be excused to call them a bitch. Just gonna throw that out there. Unprovoked. Oh, what did he do? He asked if he could sing in the talent show, and she stabbed him with a pin. Great introduction. You can't see me, but I'm doing a thumbs up. It's a sarcastic thumbs up. <sighs> it took him longer. To, it took him longer than anticipated to arrive at his destination. Word got around he was going to preform, not perform, preform. And it was difficult to sneak out of Site-19 with everyone on, uh, everyone on high alert. You can't do this. You have to establish which Bright you're talking about. I mean, I get it now. But you didn't establish early on which Bright we're dealing with. This is the Bright of uh, the things Dr. Bright is not allowed to do at the Foundation. But that's not the all. That's not even the mainline Bright in, in most stories. That's just a fan-conceptualized character. People, it's like the person who wrote this was like, I can be as shitty as I want to to Bright. Because everyone knows Bright is a crazy maniacal murder person. But that's not true. In plenty of stories, he's just a regular doctor. But at the very least, we are now establishing which version of Bright it is. Anyway. In the end, he got through the defenses using the old, I'm just here to check on things and flashing his badge before... <laughs> we, yeah, he's got access. Why would they need... What's the difficulty? You walk up to the door and you go, I have access to this thing. Let me in. Oh, okay. What are they going to do? Be like, I heard you were going to be in the talent show. I'm not going to let you into this secure facility. The f*** does that even mean? <laughs> no reasonable person, even in the... Even of the Dr. Bright's not allowed to list universe, would, would be like, I heard you're in the talent show, so you're not allowed in here. <laughs> oh my god. Why? 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 Dr. Bright, congrats on winning this month's lottery. Why don't you tell, tell me what I've won? He shouted, spinning in a chair to laugh hysterically. A mirror image of Jack Bright laughed along with him. You've won a lifetime supply of me, courtesy of SCP-2000. The two copies of Bright began to laugh in a chorus with hundreds of others. scp v one you're my favorite me besides me. There could have been more of us if you just waited five days to warm it up. Uh, I could have been uh, difficult for me to get to the hundred, not a hundred thousand. Good point. Not letting me work with myself was a stupid rule. Think of how awesome we could all be. Yeah, I was playing. This is actually pretty boring. Yeah, because playing around with ourselves has gotten us so far. One of the clones shouted, "Bright race!" You know, this this whole interlude here was kind of dumb. Someone hit whoever said that. Okay, all us lazy slob. This, I mean, this is just an extended. Hey, me. Hey, me. <sighs> There's a party which we are going to fucking go keter on tomorrow night. And I have to not only get you ready for what we're going to do, but I have to get you into Site-19. Looking over the ocean of himself, he couldn't help but feel love for himself more than he did already. <sighs> well, this whole interlude is kind of useless. Like, you're revealing your thing before you need to reveal it. Like, if I get where this is probably going to go. Whatever the talent show thing is it's gonna involve hundreds of brights but wouldn't that be more interesting if you just introduced like you showed bright doing his thing and then suddenly hundreds of brights showed up instead of hey let's show him being actually copied the whole thing was boring let's get to the next section the side 19 and you know what's even better if you were gonna do that you could have done it first not second if you put, introduce that that way, you give me an idea of which bright we're dealing with, and then the assault makes more sense. <sighs> okay. The Site-19 Christmas party had gone surprisingly well. No containment breaches, no threats to the world ending. No threats to the world ending, that is literally what that says, and absolutely no abnormality whatsoever. 
just the last performance of the talent show and everyone could go back to the housing sector with their lives intact and the ethics director wouldn't have to write it. Why would the ethics director have to write a report over any of this? If things go wrong, the ethics director is not the person who is in charge of dealing with the problems. It just feels like this was a character somebody wanted to be an ethics director and then they shoehorned it in to be like kind of in charge of something in order to make it so their character was more important than it really is. Which, oh boy, you're on Bright. I'm praying you don't make me have to work tonight, but I'm also hoping you do so I can organize your permanent containment. The director grinned and Jack returned the smile with a wholly innocent air. Let's all just try to have fun, director. Actually, no, it says let's just all try to have. Nope. Let's just all try and have fun. When it should be, let's all just try to have fun, director. Like, the phrasing is super awkward, but that's the least of this f***ing draft's problems. Jack walked past her and stepped onto the stage. Everyone in the audience instantly became quiet and fearful, looking around them for anything that might be used to massacre the... Okay, I am so sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop right here for a second. We're going to continue. There's not much left. You can have as much fun with this as you want. There are jokes, there are lots of laughs to be had. But if your Dr. Bright is so dangerous that the whole room thinks he's going to kill us all, you put Dr. Bright into a box. Because he's already anomalous. You put him into a box. End of story. So anytime something like that happens in a story that goes that wild and crazy, that weird... Automatically, you know, this is not a realistic story. You've lost any semblance of realism that you already had, and this didn't have much to begin with. <sighs> All right, less serious for a second. Bright smiled and waved at the audience. Thanks for coming, everyone. It's been fun tonight. It's been a fantastic year of fun and containment and research and stuff. I've got a treat for you. The audience made an audible shift, ready to jump up and run at a moment's notice. Tonight, I'm going to sing my favorite Christmas song. The people below the stage looked at one another and mumbled before sitting down. Perfect? It's a, it, there's no question mark on the page. I'm just like, oh, perfect? What? He's like, oh, they don't think I'm going to murder them all. Yes, we've moved on. What? Ugh. I hate these kinds of stories. Like, I'm fine with making jokes about the Foundation staff. I'm fine about them doing stuff and abusing their power every once in a while, if it's funny. But, uh Like, this goes... 12 steps beyond <laughs> that it goes from it's funny to this is ridiculous and would never happen and isn't funny like when you go overboard on a joke when you run it too hard when you try and wink at the audience and go ha ha look at what i've written it's not funny anymore there is very little room i'm not gonna say there is no room because i've seen super silly articles before that worked there's almost no room in the average article for anything other than playing the joke straight. Treat it seriously, and the audience will find it hilarious. But if you treat it silly as the narrator, as the writer, as the author, if you don't respect your own joke, nobody else will. I took a deep breath before starting. Silent night. Holy night. Everyone seemed to relax. Bright didn't seem badly, and there was no death so far. All is calm. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's all late enough to a stupid fucking pun, isn't it? The people in the first row were the first to see the look on his face and stand, but it was far too late. A massive qu Late for- too late for what? A massive choir formed out of the backstage and ran into formation behind Jack Bright, a choir made up of exact clones of the original. All is bright. Ethics director Lorelai stood instantly. Okay. Yeah, the pun, all is bright. I get it. Oh, that's hilarious. Foaming at the mouth, Bracken helped cry as a beautiful army of angels sang behind him. As the terrified audience began to clear out, all he could see was Clef in the back laughing hysterically and the ethics director brandishing... A handgun? Bright looked down to see his chest blossoming like a red poinsettia beneath his coat, and his extremities growing fidget as he crumbled like a chalk statue. Crumbled like a chalk statue? He broke into pieces? I don't think that's what this person meant. 
As his world faded to black, he could see what looked like an MTF unit breaking into the room and gunshots rang out. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Fuck this thing. Yeah, that's that's what a Mary Sue looks like right there. Yep. For once, that is not an incorrect way to describe something. Ah, uh, thank God damn it. Why do I have to keep doing these? Okay, bye.